Chris Adams and Felicity Moffat. This is the sickening sight rescuers arrived to find on the Pacific Highway at 3.30 this morning. Two buses locked together in a head-on collision. A mass of hopelessly tangled wreckage with surviving passengers trapped, bleeding and desperately crying out for help. The force of the impact ripped seats out and scattered luggage over a wide area. As bodies were freed and laid out beside the road, the extent of the carnage was realised. They were setting up a field hospital on the right, on the left-hand side of the road here of me, and then on the right-hand side they were setting up a morgue, and as they were going from one person, as they were deceased, they were transferring them into the morgue. Compounding the tragedy is knowledge that most of the passengers were homeward bound for Christmas. In the minutes after the crash, some of the survivors managed to smash their way out of the bus windows. They staggered to the veranda of a roadside home where resident Dorothy Kelly did all she could to help. They staggered in, we put blankets on them and gave them cups of tea and they come in on the veranda. They said there's nothing we could do for these in the buses. They were locked in. As the rescue effort continued, doctors and chaplains began the heartbreaking task of trying to identify victims using watches and other personal belongings. It's now six hours since the accident happened and police believe there are still four bodies trapped inside the wreckage. The disaster happened in light rain on what locals say is a good stretch of the notorious Pacific Highway. Most of the deaths occurred on the Brisbane-bound Transcity bus. The driver of the Sydney-bound McCafferty's coach was ending his shift and was to be relieved just 15 kilometres away in Kempsey. Rounding a slight bend, his bus collided with the oncoming coach, the vehicles wedged together by the impact. Despairing over this latest and most horrific accident in Australian history, state government ministers arrived to be briefed by police. Oh, they, 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 they mutilate, they mutilate them once but the real burden of this national tragedy has fallen on the township of Kempsey. Kempsey Hospital was never intended to handle this number of casualties. Shortly after the accident, it acted as a clearinghouse. Tonight, 20 victims remain in the Kempsey Hospital. Another 21 are in hospitals in nearby towns, and five were flown to Sydney by air ambulance. All are in a serious condition. One survivor flown out this afternoon counts himself lucky to be alive. I was asleep, and I just woke up on the ground beside the wrong bus. 13 members of a special surgical team from Sydney St Vincent's Hospital flew in early today to treat emergency cases. The youngest victim was a two-year-old girl. She's in a serious condition with leg and head injuries in a Sydney hospital. All on board both coaches were from Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. Many of the dead were teenagers. Among the survivors, overseas tourists, an American, one man from New Zealand and at least one from London. For Kempsey residents, it's simply a horrific tragedy. John Thomas lives just 300 metres from the accident site. I've never seen anything like it. It's just like a mangled mess of people and that. And there was people hanging out of the windows of buses and falling out of it and all sorts of turning out when we got there. What was the noise like? Well, a lot of people screaming and carrying on. Superintendent Bob Hewish is a country cop. For him, road accidents are an all-too-frequent occurrence, but not like this one. A battlefield. I know, I've never seen anything like it in 38 years in the police force. I hope never to see anything like it again. As police and rescue volunteers worked into the afternoon to clear the wreckage, a temporary morgue was set up on the roadside. As bodies were identified, they were taken by ambulance to a local factory until they could be transported to Sydney. Tonight, the town of Kempsey is rallying around the survivors with offers of blood donations and accommodations for victims' relatives who left Sydney on a special charter flight this afternoon. They'll be met by members of a special counselling service set up by local churches at the Kempsey Hospital. Chris Adams and Felicity Moffat reporting. News of the accident less than 24 hours after an inconclusive Federal Road Safety Summit brought a swift reaction from the New South Wales government. From midnight, there's to be a 90 kilometre an hour speed limit on heavy vehicles on that state's roads. But that small comfort to scores of friends and relatives in shock and confusion at Brisbane and Sydney terminals where several buses were due in this morning. At Brisbane's transit centre, police were waiting at the Transcity counter to deal with distressed relatives. There were tense moments as passenger lists were checked to find out if a loved one had been on board the coach which crashed. Many were escorted to police headquarters. The earphones ran hot as relatives rang in to check the list of dead and injured. You were both in Kempsey Hospital. What about the other one? There's a third one. Nothing is yet. 
Confusion also reigned in Sydney at McCafferty's bus terminal. This woman was told her father had been involved in the smash, but there was a tearful reunion when he turned up safe and well on a later bus. Others learned with relief that their loved one had escaped the carnage. Just shaking and crying and just thinking, God. Back in Brisbane, there were more tears of joy as 18-year-old Laurel Pottinger was reunited with her mother. Laurel was on board the Trans City bus, travelling only two minutes ahead of the one that crashed. And the terrible thing was that beforehand we were behind them and somehow or other um, we took off before them, so if it had been the other way around, we would have been the ones. A mix-up saved the lives of Leigh Mosisi and her husband. They were booked to travel on the coach which crashed, but were transferred to the other Trans City service in Sydney. Thank God that he leads us to this bus. So I feel sorry for the people because we're all back together. And I still remember the faces of the people that we've been together waiting for this bus. Employees of McCafferty's bus line have been horrified by the disaster. The company's near-perfect safety record shattered in the most shocking way. We've got a safety record envied by most, but uh, that sort of thing doesn't do us any good at this time. The Kempsey crash is the latest and worst in a spate of coach smashes along the Pacific Highway. Almost exactly two months ago, 20 people died when a tour bus and semi-trailer collided near Grafton. Earlier this month, a car and Sunliner coach crashed. The ensuing fireball killed three, but the bus driver and 51 passengers escaped. Today's disaster has spurred the New South Wales government into swift action. From midnight, the heavy vehicle speed limit on the highway has been slashed to 90 kilometres an hour, but Queensland won't be joining in. I don't believe it's a time for knee-jerk reactions. What we need is some long-term planning. Ironically, a New South Wales government decision to abolish the Brisbane to Sydney limited rail service will mean more bus runs between the two capitals. Up to 1,000 passenger spaces a day will be lost when the service is replaced by the XPT train in February. They ought not to put additional pressure on the Pacific Highway, which has already demonstrated its inability to cope with traffic pressure. Carol Horn, Seven Nightly News. Within hours of the Kempsey tragedy, heavy vehicle speed limits again dominated the agenda. We've always maintained that the limit for trucks and buses should be 80 kilometres an hour. Back from an inspection of the roadside carnage, the government prepared to meet halfway, admitting the nationally agreed 100 kilometre heavy vehicle speed limit had not worked out for New South Wales. We have taken the decision to put a limit of 90 kilometres an hour per hour on all heavy transports and buses. I think it stinks. What about the cars that do 140, 150 kilometres an hour? They come around us like we're standing still. No comment, mate. And there were politicians only too eager to start the political point scoring. The Minister for Transport is reducing the speed limit of coaches and trucks from 100 to 90. 18 months too late. I think the government has blood on its hands over this issue simply because they have cut road funding by 30% in real terms. That's the kind of crass remark one would expect from the hooligans of the National Party. While some played politics, others looked for solutions. The pressure on to give the Pacific Highway, like the New England, national highway status for federal road funding. The Pacific Highway needs to be divided carriageways because of the volume and the type of traffic that it's carrying. The order imposing the 90 kilometre speed limit on trucks and buses has been approved by the Governor, effective at midnight. We'll be vigorously enforcing those uh, new rules. David Jones, Seven Nightly News. The names of those who died have not yet been released, but friends and relatives wanting information on possible victims should phone the toll-free number 008 227 228 or 02 332 9344. A list of the 41 injured has been made available, including at least eight Queenslanders. Some of the survivors are in a serious but stable condition. Hospitals in the Kempsey area have set up a hotline for relatives. This is the number 065 626 066. 065 626 066. Chairs everywhere. The whole interior of the bus torn to shreds. Just get you square in the face. Ambulance man Ted Hill was the first to find the wreckage. On night shift, he'd finished work just three hours before being telephoned at home. Twelve hours later, he was still shuttling the injured between three hospitals and the airport. He had no intention of leaving before there was absolutely nothing more he could do. What got me the most was I had about an 18 or a 19 year old girl 
she was dead. Simple as that, she was dead. I mean, I checked her. I must have went back to her four times and checked her. But what I did is I stuck my head out through a broken window and half a dozen breaths of fresh air and sort of gave a deep sigh and sort of pulled back in and I was right and I just kept going for about another hour. A special counselling service was set up at the hospital. For many of those who survived the crash, there was the second blow of breaking bad news to others. Reverend Ed Hubert and his wife Heather were among those called to comfort the survivors. I had uh, 27 years in the military forces and uh, in Korea I can remember seeing some fairly traumatic things but nothing quite of the magnitude of this because you certainly don't anticipate it. It's all tragedy, every part of it's tragedy because plans and hopes have probably been destroyed for many, many people and you can't measure that kind of tragedy. One fellow said he woke up thinking he was uh, in the middle of a nightmare and realised it was reality. Um, another young lass, 12 year old, and uh, her father and brother were on the bus too and she didn't know whether they were okay, where they were or what. Uh, we were able to find her brother for her, he was also in the hospital. Uh, we still don't know whether they found it out or not yet. The little township of Kempsey was at a loss to explain how it happened. But just in that certain section between Kempsey and uh, Clyde Bucker, it's actually the best part of the highway between, say, Fort Macquarie, South Kempsey and North of Kempsey. So there should really be no excuse for what Well, I was surprised that there was a major accident there this morning. Everybody's heard about the, the uh, numbers that have been killed and everybody says, well, well, I've tears come in your eyes and all this kind of thing. About, you know, just turn the, your gut up. A piece of road there is a really good bit of road. It's probably our better bit of road. No, I don't think it should have happened. The trauma of this latest crash will remain with those involved long after the last patient has been released from hospital. And among those who will be treated to cope with the emotional scarring will be the ambulancemen and clergymen so close to the crisis today. I think it's left an impression on all of us. Yeah, definitely. Sandra Odorisio reporting.